All right, folks, Judd Zolga, Jeff Dubay of the Judd Dubay Show, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. weekdays. We just got done with our first edition of Vikings Event Line, Jeff Dubay, coming off a uh, performance by the Vikings in Detroit today that was uh, less than well-received by our callers. Well, to me, it was a game where the Lions wanted to give you every opportunity to take this thing. They made every mistake imaginable. They looked like the poorly coached outfit that they've been for years, and they still beat you by 10. So, I mean, you've got, you've got issues on both sides of the football. Your defense gave up 34. Uh, offensively, you didn't run the ball after the first play where you got 78 from, from Peterson. It was a train wreck after that. You have a quarterback who won't make good decisions. He can't pull the trigger. He's indecisive in the pocket. And you've got an offensive coordinator who's unimaginative and uninventive and doesn't give him any breaks. Uh, so other than that, I don't see why the fans should be upset. But besides that, how was the play, Jeff Dubay? You know what? Jerome Simpson is one hell of a wide receiver. All you doubters, all you haters, Jerome Simpson, uh, the one bright spot for the Minnesota Vikings. Ponder's the easiest guy to bash. So let's go to offensive coordinator. Bill Musgrave. Yeah. What was that game plan? You drafted I don't know. Cordero Patterson in the first round. Mm-hmm. I don't care how raw he is. He has athletic ability. He was targeted once yeah. today. Kyle Rudolph, once again, as far as I'm Where's concerned, Rudolph? was MIA. Yeah. Why is Bill Musgrave insisting Christian Ponder run an offense that he wants run instead of having Christian Ponder do the few things? Christian Ponder does do athletically does some things. things pretty well. They're just not allowing him to do it. And to me right now, they are setting... Every quarterback they have, including Joe Webb last year against Green Bay, they're setting them up to fail. Yeah, you know what? You're allowed to throw the ball on first down. They've, they've relaxed the rules in the NFL. They allow first down passing. I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a Ponder fan. I, I think there are some things he can do. I don't think he's completely inept. He can throw on the run. Uh, he can make some athletic plays. Uh, he, he's, he's, he struggles in the pocket. But here's the other thing. He is asked to throw the ball on obvious passing downs. I mean, he's asked to throw the ball when they know they're going to throw it. He's asked to throw it on second and eight and third and 11. I mean, let him throw it on first down once in a while. Let him throw the ball on first and 10. Uh, come out and wing it. Just throw it around. Let him get in rhythm. Let him, let him feel like a quarterback early. Uh, the, way they, the way they call this offense, the way they coordinate this offense, doesn't give a quarterback much of a chance to be a quarterback. And I don't know that they have much of a quarterback, but if you take a guy who's not very good and then make it harder for him than it has to be, what kind of chance do you have? And here's the other thing, too. All preseason, what did we hear? Number one, we're not really seeing the offense. Then when they get to Detroit, we're going to see the offense. And the other thing we heard, or we Mm -hmm. thought, and I talked about this a lot, was Adrian Peterson would save the day. And maybe the worst thing that happened today was he did save the day for one play, his first carry. But after that, the Lions adjusted and essentially shut him down. And when that happens, where else do you go? Greg Jennings, three catches, 33 yards, I believe. Greg Jennings is being paid a lot of money. You got some. You got some weapons. You got to use you, them. You you've got to be able to run this offense somewhat. Mm-hmm. And here's the scary thing: if Christian Ponder is at some point benched, and Matt Castle comes in, mm-hmm. and they ask Castle to run the exact same offense, mm-hmm. I'm not sure he'll do that much better. No, they've I, no, got to get. They've got to appeal to the strengths of the guys they've got, and they're not doing it. But Adrian yeah. Peterson, for one play, we thought, oh my gosh, 70 plus yards. It's going to be a huge day for him. He rushed for 93 yards. I think he rushed for 15 yards after that first touchdown. Sometimes coaching can be a difficult thing to critique because we're not in the meetings. We're not behind the scenes. We're not breaking down the film and putting together game plans. We're not in the rooms. But I can tell you one thing that, uh, that I use as a measuring stick, and that is does a coach look at the talent he has and then tailor what his, uh, tailor his offense to his talent, or does he take his what he does and he's so steadfast and strong in what he believes and what he does that he's got to force it on a group of people that aren't fit to run it. And it's, to me, it's what separates the, the, the good from the bad, the great from the inept. And uh, you look at a team like San Francisco and Jim Harbaugh, they, they make a switch in the middle of the year to Colin Kaepernick, and they go from a West Coast offense mm-hmm. to, a, to, a, to a, a spread option read offense in the middle of a season. And what do they do? They take off and go to the Super Bowl. And, Smooth and as can be. Yeah. And, and, Smooth sailing. Did, do you think Musgrave would have made that kind of an adjustment had he been faced with that kind of a change from one quarterback to another? Well, you know what? He was faced with that kind of change going to the playoffs and did nothing to, uh, to, to coach to the strengths of Joe Webb. And we're not sure what those strengths might have been. And to make a quarterback out of Joe Webb, uh, you know, in, in one week going to the playoffs would be a pretty uh, – that's a lot to ask out of anybody. But at least make an effort. I mean, at least show us that you're trying to get him in a position to win. And I just don't think Musgrave has that kind of imagination. Let's wrap things up this way. Defense, Kevin Williams sorely missed in the middle. Can you imagine yeah. the Detroit Lions four years ago saying, how are we going to gash the Vikings? We're going to run right up the middle. Yeah, That's what happened today. Yeah. Kevin Williams injured, sorely missed, thinks he'll play next week. He better play next week. Call Fat Pat. Defense. Call Fat Pat. Defense. Are we, how down are we on the defense, and how much do we also attribute the fact the defense was on the field a ton in the first how half? How much does Antoine Winfield's phone ring this week? Yeah, exactly. But that defense, too, must have tired out. And I'm not giving them a pass on this. No. They didn't play well. But look at the time of possession, Jeff. It meant something. Yep. And the last thing that Warm struck down. me is Jeff Locke. Well, yeah. What the gotta, hell? Gotta get more are you from kidding me? And I don't care if you're a rookie punter. Oh you God. can't have bad games if you're a punter. Is Chris Clue's phone going to ring this week? 
he's available. Well, then he's playing, but seriously, he's playing you Warcraft. Can't, you can't tell me. Up. You can't tell me. Our oh, new punter is learning. No, 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 no. You draft a punter. Yeah. That punter better step in. There are some uh, issues here. There, are, yeah. Is, uh, well, well. As, again, I don't want to. If Jerome Simpson the media, is the only thing you got to hang your head on, yeah, there, Simpson. there are too many issues to count on one hand. What a catch that. by Jerome Simpson. Well, he, you know what? Uh, he does have some athletic ability. He does have some breakaway speed, and he does. He's got this kind of this kind of athletic grace going after a deep ball. If he's you, healthy, you see him adjust to it. You see him go up for it. He catches it at a high, high point. He's he's got some ability. Tell people about Vikings Vent Line. Vikings Vent Line. That's our new show. It comes on the second the Vikings game ends. I mean, the the, the the coaches are shaking hands and we're taking calls at the two minute warning. We start lining up the calls, queuing them up, and uh, by the time the game is over, when that gun goes, we go. And uh, it's fast paced and it's a little volatile and uh, it was a lot of fun. 651-646-8255 is the local number. 877, what is it? 615-1500 is the outstanding here, look, it's right number. Right there. Right also, that? See that? See that? hold right on a button? second here. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to do this at the That's danger. It. There are the phone numbers. There they are. There are the phone numbers. And right also, my head. also, you can catch us weekdays, 9 a.m. too much caffeine. No, I have way too much caffeine. Way too much coffee. We're a little worked up from the show. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. weekdays. Tomorrow we'll be on. We'll run some phone calls, get a lot of reaction. You're a superstar. Mm -hmm. People love you on Twitter. I'm glad you're back on Twitter. I'm black on Twitter. I'm back on Twitter. I'm not black on Twitter. I'm back you're on Twitter. You're back on Twitter. Yeah, I'm white everywhere I go. Judd Zolgad, Jeff Dubay, 1500ESPN.com. Thanks for coming. And like I said, 1500ESPN weekdays, 9 to 1. Listen to us. Vikings Vent Line post game. That's it. We're, We're done. on a mission from God. We're done. Hold on. Watch this. I'm going to turn it off and I'm not going to edit this out. Ooh. Hit the button.